Hey everyone, us on 007 here to do another pay-per-view review and we are up to Taboo Tuesday 2005. I'm going to get straight into this because I'm going to be watching one match at a time and then reviewing it. So the pay-per-view started with uh, Edge and uh, Chris Masters coming out and then Matt Hardy and Rey Mysterio get voted in to verse them. But then Edge says, oh no, not wrestling tonight. Here you go, here's Snitsky. Um, so we saw Matt Hardy, Rey Mysterio versus Snitsky and Chris Masters, which was actually a pretty, it was a pretty good starter. I think it went a bit too long. I feel that starter sh uh, opening matches should go for 10, 10 minutes, maybe 15, if it's really good. Um, it ended with that sort of fast paced, really sort of started the pay-per-view off at a very solid note. I've given it a two and a half stars to start off the pay-per-view. Um, there wasn't much to it, I mean, um, just the usual sort of fun sort of tag match. It ended when Rey Mysterio hit the 619 on Masters, then, uh, Matt got the, what did Matt get? Matt got the twist of fate, and then, uh, uh, Rey Mysterio got the springboard crossbody for the pin. Um, nothing real special in this match apart from the ending, um, it was just solid, not much storytelling in it, but uh, there we go. The next match was uh, Eugene and the Superfly versus Rob Conway and Tyson Tomko. Uh, Superfly was um, the Superfly was a choice between Superfly, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and Kamala. Uh, Superfly only won by three votes, which was surprising. Um, but they came out, it's just the usual sort of stuff. Eugene got owned for a little bit. It only went for five five minutes. It wasn't that great. No, definitely not special at all. Um, it was pretty much just... It was it was good to see uh, Superfly... Good to see Superfly again. He got the uh, Superfly Splash or whatever it's called. And yeah, I, I've given that uh, match a two and a half... Uh, oh, sorry, a half star. So the next match was uh, Mick Foley, oh well, one of Mick Foley's uh, alter egos, or Carl, uh, versus Carlito. So Mankind came up with the goods over Cactus Jack by about 13%. Um, and yeah, it wasn't a bad match. I mean, Mick Foley's been away for 18 months and that really didn't help the match at all because he wasn't really that up to scratch with everything and... He wasn't that quick, and he obviously put on weight, and Carlito really wasn't that great a wrestler at the time, so not much happened in it. Uh, Mankind ended up winning when he when he pulled out Socko, well, Carlito in a Socko version. Carlito, Socko, Socko, Carlito, whatever. Um, and yeah, he gave him, and he, Carlito passed out pretty much. So I gave that match a one and three quarter stars out of five. So the next match, and again, not much to it. Um, Shawn Michaels goes in. Shawn Michaels win the pot, wins the pole for the triple threat main event, and goes into the main event versus John Cena and Kurt Angle. But because of that, uh, Kane and Big Show lost, so they tag team in a World Tag Team Championship match to face uh, Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch, in which again. It's nothing special. It just ends with a double choke slam from Kane and Big Show. Seven to ten minutes, I think it was, and it really was nothing special. Kane and Big Show pick up their first uh, their first tag championship as a tag team, and uh, yeah. Uh, the next is Batista versus John Coachman with uh, Goldust and Vader, and this was just shocking. Uh, a street fight won in a landslide over a verbal confrontation and uh, and an arm wrestling match. Um, I mean, it was just stupid. It was just a way of putting Batista over. This could have been used a lot more wisely on another match, uh, like increasing a match's time or something. Maybe making it making the match a bit better. The other matches a bit better. So guys, I give that one a dud. Batista wins. Yeah, moving on.
The, the next match was a Diva Battle, uh, Fulfill Your Fantasy ma Battle Royal, which uh, they were in lingerie. It had uh, Trish Stratus, Ashley, uh, Candice Michelle, Mickey James debuting on pay-per-view, Maria and Victoria. Overall, this was a pretty good match. Um, this was all building to their res uh, to Mickey James and Trish Stratus's uh, WrestleMania 22 match, which was a pretty good Divas rivalry, actually. I um, have never really watched it before, but I've seen clips of it, and I'm just looking forward to it. Um, in the end, Mickey James helped Trish Rin win by taking out Victoria. Uh, one and a half stars. This match was uh, Triple H versus uh, Ric Flair. Now, this was a brutal match. I mean, I never thought Triple H would have let Ric Flair come out on top, uh, him trying to get back into the world title scene, but he ended up doing that after Ric Flair just dominated him with, him with a chair and walked out of the cage. But, boy, this they both bled like pigs, and the match was just so brutal. I swear to God, that was just crazy how brutal it was. Haven't seen something like that since uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, maybe, a while ago. Um, yeah, so it had the match had some great psychology. Uh, Triple H, this is where Triple H was starting to look a little bit overweight, starting to put on some. Um, and Ric Flair was trying to get back in the business. He had the IC title and stuff. Um, and yeah. Uh, I'm giving that match a three and a half stars because it was entertaining, but there just was there was a lot missing to it. I can't put my finger on it, but like it just wasn't a four star match. It doesn't have that entertainment factor. It just wasn't as technically sound, and it was a bit slow as well. So yeah. Okay, so the next match was my favourite type of match, a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. It was between Kurt Angle and John Cena, and then earlier in the night there was a poll for Kane, Big Show and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels won, and as we know that Big Show and Kane won the championships earlier in the night. Now this, I love this match. I, the reason why I love triple threat matches is because it's just power move after power move. The endings are just like finisher, and it's just crazy. I, I just Triple threat matches appeal to me when they're done correctly. I don't know why, it's just I love them. Um, so the match all through it was pretty good. Um, it started off as usual sort of stuff. Uh, sure, it was pretty funny at the beginning. Sure, Michaels just couldn't get into it every time he tried to. He just kept getting knocked down. Um, but then as we started going on, uh, Kurt Angle and Sean Michaels teamed up and took out John Cena, put him through a table. Cena was out for a while and we got to see Kurt Angle and Sean Michaels for a little bit. But something. But then after we've seen them for about five minutes, something that really just, I felt, brought the match down. This could have easily been a four and a half star for me. Maybe I, I may be pushing the quarter because John Cena did his usual Superman sort of finish, but he didn't get to. He, he came back. And he did his Superman sort of thing, but it was interrupted. Like it was. He's doing Superman. No, he's not. He's doing Superman. No, he's not. He didn't actually get the five moves of Doom on, which I'm not sure if he even had them at this stage. But yeah. Uh, so in the end, uh, Cena won after. After he hit the uh, after he was in the ankle lock for ages, and then Sean did the uh, the elbow drop from the top of the turnbuckle um, on Ch Kurt. Then he tuned up the band, hit Kurt with it, hit Kurt with the elbow, and then ran into Cena's FU. This was uh, I felt the fast pace action really appeals to me, and I love that sort of stuff. And that's why I've given it four and a half stars. There wasn't much like there was some in ring, there was some good in ring psychology, but and some good storytelling, but uh, that's what really appealed me to it, is the really fast-paced action sort of stuff. So guys, I'm on Swanton. Overall, I'm going to give the Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view a 7.25 out of 10. So guys, I'm on Swanton007. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you.